Hello everyone, I've got another pin video here for you and um, <clears throat> I apologize, I'm a little bit behind in getting this video out. I've been struggling with some upper respiratory issues, um, you might have noticed a little bit in my last video and uh, I took a little bit of time off from shooting another video until my voice came back. So the pin that we have today is um, not a Chinese fountain pen, um, been reviewing a lot of those lately. And this pen actually is a very interesting fountain pen. So the pen in front of you is made by a gentleman. Um, his name is Mike Allen. He owns a company called Woodshed Pen Co. And uh, about two months ago, uh, give or take, I, I started uh, an Instagram account. I'm not a huge social media person. I primarily just YouTube and I'm very, very, very rarely ever even on Facebook. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to start an Instagram account, upload uh, pictures of my pins and also kind of meet some other people in the fountain pen community as well. And uh, Mike is one of those people. So I stumbled across his Instagram. I think I saw a couple of pins uh, through my feed and I looked at his account, started following him and sure enough, I got hooked very quickly. So Mike uh, hand turns pins himself and his business is predicated primarily on Instagram from what I've been able to tell. Uh, he doesn't really have a website. He has a website link, but there's really nothing on the website. Um, he does upload a lot of pictures through his Instagram as well as videos on pins that he's either working on or just finished, whether it be for a customer or something that he's selling. And this particular pin that you see in front of you was one that I saw a little bit farther back in his feed and I thought that is a beautiful material. So I, I reached out through him, I direct messaged him and what I did was I screenshotted the uh, post and sent that to him and just simply asked if he had any pens available or was planning on making that same type of material again. And to my surprise, Mike answered back within five minutes and told me he had two pens that he was currently working on that did not already have homes. He sent me pictures of both of those as well as other pens that he had finished that he had not uploaded to his Instagram. And I thought it was really cool to kind of see the differences in all of the pens, like as far as from start to finish, how they all look so much different, even though they were hypothetically made out of the same material. And um, I told him I'd like to get one. And here we are now. So this pen really doesn't have a name per se. He doesn't really name any of his pens. Um, he does, in the invoice he sent me, he called it Happy Accident. So that is the name I'm going to go with. I'm going to call this pen Happy Accident. So the first thing that you know I really notice about the pen is just all the different depth and color in this pen. Um, it has some beautiful chatoyance to it. You can see greens, blues, grays, blacks, whites, all sorts of different color patterns. It's kind of got that glittery look to it. Now I asked Mike to, I asked him what material this is made out of. He said alumalite. This is like a polyurethane type material if I'm not mistaken. From what I've been able to find out, it's a very uh, sturdy, durable material. Um, it does to me at least felt a little bit different in the hand than like most acrylics or resins per se. Um, it's very lightweight, which I really like. Now you'll notice that we've got flat tops on both the cap finial here and the barrel. Now one thing is the ends are just slightly rounded as you can tell on that top there. Another thing you'll notice that this pen does not have any metal on it. It really is just letting the material do the talking. There's no clip, no uh, cap band, nothing on the barrel as far as metal goes. And I actually like that touch. I know some people may not like the fact that it doesn't have a clip. I personally do not mind it whatsoever. Now, you'll notice that as we move our way down the cap, there's just a very slight step down from the cap to the barrel. I do like that. It's kind of a streamlined look to it. And um, we mo move our way down the barrel. The barrel state is a little bit skinnier than the cap, of course. And of course, I'll upload dimensions for you guys. And then we move our way down the barrel. And then again, we've got a flat bottom at the barrel. Now taking this cap off, it takes just over one and a half turns from what I've been able to tell. 
and it reveals that section. Now, because we've got a streamlined uh, cap to barrel, you'll notice that we do have a step down here. I really don't mind the step down. Now, granted, I don't typically hold the pin right here. The uh, threads here are very well machined and shallow, and I don't have any issues as far as that goes. One thing that I do like about the pin is it does have uh, an elongated section, kind of an hourglass shape to it, just slightly tapers down right here and then just flares out a little bit at the end doesn't have a natural lip, um, but it does have a slight flare out. So for me, this pin is very comfortable to hold in the hand. Um, you'll notice that it fits really nice back here in my, my pearly cue, I think is what it's called. And it, it's very comfortable to hold in the hand. Now this is not a pin that posts, which I know for some people, if you are just, you have to post your pins, this may not be a pin that would be for you. Um, for me, I don't mind it at all. It's a lightweight material. Um, I have written with this pin excessively over the last two weeks. The section for me is a very nice size. It feels very comfortable in the hand. It's lightweight and I really don't mind writing with it at all. Um, as far as the cap, now for some people obviously it doesn't have a clip so you might be worried about it rolling away. I usually just stand it up on my desk or something like that um, or just simply hold it in my left hand as I'm writing. So, Really no issues from that perspective. Now the nib, what kind of nib do we have here? So we have a Yovo nib. This is a number six steel nib. And now I chose to go with the fine um, because I knew that I would be using this a lot at work and I thought a fine nib would be great because I'm gonna be using it on cheaper paper and that would obviously be something I would wanna go with. And then you'll notice our feed here is kind of that German feed, that Yovo feed. And it is a, a screw-in nib unit, so you can easily unscrew this pin, which is nice from for a uh, perspective of cleaning it, um, as well as removing it. And then also if you have other Yovo uh, nib units, easily just interchange them out, of course. Now I know Mike does offer these an extra fine through, I think, 1.5 stub. You can get a 1.1, a broad, a uh, medium, and a fine, and of course an extra fine. Now, as far as the inner workings of the pen, we've got a Schmidt converter here, as you can tell. It's so a nice Schmidt converter with the metal collar here, as well as down at the bottom, um, which I like, of course, just a piston converter. Now you'll notice you have the same material threads here, no metal as well as no metal in the barrel. So you can easily eyedropper this pin, which I think is another really nice thing. Um, barrel is plenty hollowed out to hold quite a bit of ink, uh, very well machined and cleaned out in there. So I think as far as if you're somebody that really likes to eyedropper pens, this is definitely a pen, you know, maybe pop a little bit of silicone grease on those threads and you should be good to go as far as eyedropping the pen. Um, as far as everything else, I mean, that's really it about the pen. It does come with a pin coffin is what I got it. Uh, very, you know, just material in here. Uh, pen was sent to me that way. Came very quickly. Uh, Mike was great. Um, he communicated great. The pen was not finished whenever um, he originally, whenever I originally had offered to buy it. And um, Mike communicated how long it would probably take. As soon as the pen was ready, he sent me pictures to okay it as far as whether or not I was okay with the pen. The final product, I said I was. He made sure I was okay with still getting a fine nib. I told him I was, and then immediately the pen was shipped out to me, and I got it very quickly. From the time that I interacted with him to the time the pen came to my front door, I think it was just slightly over two weeks. So again, very quick. Now this pen cost me $145 for the entire thing. That's the pen, the nib, assembly, everything, and shipping. So I don't pay anything extra for shipping, which I think is a good value because you're getting a, a hand-turned pen made out of a really awesome material. This is something that Mike um, does for a living. He is a craftsman. And I think $145, you can compare it to other pen manufacturers, not a bad price at all. Uh, just wanna show, again, some of the colors of this pen. Give it a little swirl, a little turn for you. Now, one thing always to note with these pens like this that are made out of these materials, 
no one pin is going to be the same. So if you see this pin here, you're like, wow, that is a beautiful pin. If you went to Mike and said, hey, I would like to get that same exact pin that I saw in this video, obviously your pin's not going to look the same. Now, granted, you can have him send you pictures of all the pins that he's done out of that material, and it will give you a good range of what your pin could come out like. And then you could obviously have him send you pictures as he's working on the pin and things of that nature. I'm sure he would be more than happy to do that. His communication, again, was great during the, the uh, process. So up next, guys, I'm going to do some sizing comparisons with this pen just to give you a generalized idea. And then uh, we will do a writing sample. See you in just a moment. All right, guys, we are back and uh, we've got some sizing comparisons here for you. Again, just to give you a little bit of an idea. So on top, of course, we have our Woodshed Pinco. That is the Happy Accident. And then we have a Pilot Metropolitan right underneath it. Obviously, uh, as far as girth goes, um, more girthy, but uh, a little bit shorter than the Pilot Metropolitan overall. And then we have a Twisby Eco here. I chose all three of these pins because I know they're pretty popular and a lot of people may own them. And then we have a Conklin All-American down at the bottom. Girth-wise, as far as that goes, very similar. And then a little bit bigger as far as length. So as you can tell, it's somewhat of a moderately sized pen, but still, again, very comfortable in the hand. Now let's see what these pens look like unposted. All right, guys, here we see all four pins uncapped. Of course, they are not posted. And I can write with all four of these pins comfortably unposted. So I don't really typically post any of these pins. Obviously, um, our happy accident up here is not a pin that you can post. So with that being said, we'll notice sections here. As far as sections go to me, the uh, Conklin All-American and our happy accident up here definitely have similar size sections as far as the girth but you'll notice as far as overall length the uh, woodshed pen definitely has a better overall length and i think for writing experience wise the the happy accident or the woodshed pen up here and the conklin all american for me are the most comfortable for what i like in a fountain pen um, so again the pin does not post. I'm not going to show these other four with them posted versus that, but just to give you an idea of how the pin would look. All right, so next I'm going to put some dimensions and some weights on the screen for you just to give you an idea. Now, bear in mind, this pin is made by hand, so the dimensions are never going to be exact. So my dimensions of my pin may be off just slightly versus the pin that you're going to get because, again, it is made by hand and might can't make sure that every single pin is exact as far as dimensions go but it's going to be pretty darn close to what you're going to get all right guys so we are back for the writing sample and uh before we get started on the writing sample going to show you guys the uh, ink that I'm using and this is the ink that I will be using for the writing sample I just got in the mail a couple weeks ago I actually bought this ink to kind of go with this pen and uh, I really like this ink it's their twinkle line it's the uh, Nemesine blue snowball nebula and as you can tell it is a glitter ink and I am definitely going to get more of this as far as they have other colors and I'm going to get some more. I got that ink from Birmingham Pen Company um, as well as some other Birmingham pen inks that I'll be trying out some other pens. So look for those reviews with those inks because uh, I really like Birmingham inks. All right, now the pen. So again, this is a wood shed pen Co. And obviously I cannot spell. And this pen, again, doesn't have a name, but I am calling it the Happy Accident. And we have got a fine Yovo nib 
And again, it's a steel nib. And first thing about this nib is it is very smooth um, with just a hint of feedback, you know, which I actually enjoy. Uh, for a fine nib, it's very smooth, writes very well. Let's do a quick writing sample with it. There you guys have it. Let's do a little bit of fast writing just so you guys can see that in action. I'm not a fast writer, but as you can tell, the feed keeps up very well, no issues there. So works very well from that perspective. Now, as far as any uh, line variation, this is not a nib that you're really gonna get any line variation out of. Um, I mean, you can squeeze just the tiniest bit. To me, it just really kind of pops out more ink. Um, it's not a nail by any means, but it definitely uh, does, it does its job from the perspective. It just writes very well. As far as wetness, bear in mind, this is a glitter ink, which sometimes can clog up that feed. But it's still a you know a, a wet nib. Um, I, th I would say moderately wet. Probably if I had a ink in it that was much more lubricating, it'd probably be even better. Um, reverse writing. I've had a couple of people ask me in the comments if I would do this more. Um, not really a pen. I mean, it's very scratchy. As you can tell, it kind of torn to the paper there. So not a pen that I would be reverse writing. Granted, I don't ever reverse write with my pens but not something I would be reverse writing with. Um, all in all, the nib though works great. This ink is awesome. See if you guys can kind of see some of that sheen and that glitter and then ink. I think it suits this pen very well. Uh, a very attractive ink for a very attractive pen in my, my opinion. All right, so there you have it. I'm trying to think if I missed anything on this pen. I wanted to give it justice. Uh, very, very nice pen. Um, I will put a link in the description for Mike's email. As, so if you don't have an Instagram account and you still want to get in contact with him, obviously you can email him and ask him to send you pics or just give him an idea of what you're looking for. Um, and then if you do have an Instagram account, definitely check him out. I'll put a link to his Instagram as well. He's got tons of pictures on there. Like I said, all I did was is I found a picture on his feed that I was like, wow, that's a beautiful pen. And I screenshotted it, sent it to him, and he got back with me within five minutes. All in all, guys, tell me what you guys think about the pen. Again, I really, really enjoy it. It's an awesome pen, and that's all I got. So everyone have a wonderful day, evening, whatever time of day you're watching this. I hope you're safe out there. And I will talk to everyone later. Thank you. Bye-bye.